Hello everyone and welcome back. We are looking today at linear programming and this is the second of a two-part lesson that we had dealing with linear programming questions. The first lesson dealt with concepts surrounding linear programming and so this lesson is one that we're going to use to tie up the, the topic, so to speak, or to give, give you some more understanding as to how to go about answering CXC questions when it comes to linear programming. Our first objective is to write the inequalities to represent the situations that will be described in the questions, of course, and to solve those linear programming problems. You should have watched that video before, or you are already familiar with linear programming concepts, and you can draw straight line graphs. Once those things are covered, you will make the, make the most sense of this video. Now let's go to the first question. We're going to go to three of them. and. The first question here says, Trish wishes to buy X oranges and Y mangoes, which, which she intends to carry in her bag. Her bag has space for six fruits. So our first situation here is to write an equality, an inequality that represents this situation. So we have X oranges. So the number of oranges that, we, that she buys plus the number of mangoes that she buys, which is represented by Y. Um, must be less than or equal to six. So we cannot have more than six fruits because her bag cannot more hold more than six. So that's our first situation there. Um, to get a good bargain, she must buy at least two mangoes. So the number of mangoes Y must be at least two, which means two or more. So it's two, three, four, five, etc. More information about the number of mangoes and oranges associated associated with a good buy or bargain is given by this y is less than or equal to 2x we are told to write this in words in a sentence and to decipher it well remember that y is the number of mangoes and x is the number of oranges so the number of mangoes is at least is less than or equal to twice the number of oranges here the number of mangoes is less than or equal to twice the number of oranges so you can write that down um, so we have three inequalities one two three those are our three inequalities and we are going to put these on a graph before you put your inequalities on, in a graph when they are written in this form we need to write them in terms of y so here we have x plus y Is less than or equal to six and so we have to transform this to, to look in, to, to be represented in the form of y so y is less than or equal to six minus x transpose it for y so that now we have it in graphing form when we're going to draw the graph though we simply draw the line as y equal to six minus x so this is important going forward that this is the inequality but when we're going to draw it on the graph we simply draw the line y equals six minus x we also will draw the line y is greater than or equal to 2. And the other one is already written up nicely for us. y is less than or equal to 2x. So we have those, those three lines that we're going to be drawing on our graph paper. Now, in the interest of time, those graphs are already drawn. If you want to go ahead and draw them, I suggest you pause the video now. Draw your graphs and then come back and continue. So we're going to draw these three graphs. They are already drawn, so let's go to it. So here is our graph, y is equal to six minus x, and y is equal to two x, and y is equal to two. Now from this, we need to look at what we call the feasible region. So let's look back at our inequalities and see what they're saying now. Um, y here is less than or equal to six minus x. So this is our line y equals 6 minus x, and we want the side of it that is less. So generally, when we want the side that is less, we shade the underside. So this is the side that we're interested in. And for the other one, the mangoes are greater than or equal to 2, so we need to shade in this direction for mangoes. I should actually use a different color here for, um, for this one. So this this... The numbers that we're interested in are going this direction. 
um, y, is, y is greater than or equal to 2. And for the third line, y is equal to 2x, we're told the number of mangoes is less than or equal to twice the number of oranges. So we want the underside of the line. And so you will notice that when you shade, that your all your arrows and all your shading will intersect in this direction. Like I said, some persons prefer to shade the side that they don't want. Um, some persons prefer to shade the side that they do want. I tend to fall in that camp where we shade the side that we want. And so what you will see here is your feasible region, which is represented by, by this region here. So I'm just going to go ahead and shade in that region for you. Um, this is our feasible region. Now, the feasible region, as we talked about, contains all the solutions that we're interested in, but we're only interested to get the best answer, to get the fastest answer, well, actually the best answer too. We only concentrate on the endpoints of those regions. So we'll be con we will be concentrating on this, re this um, endpoint here, this one here, and this one here. Now, let's look back at our question a little bit. The question said, shade the region of your graph which represents the solution set for the three inequalities. So we're just required to shade it. And this is the region that we want. So that would pretty much conclude this question. Um, y is less than six, less than or equal to 6 minus x. We shade under this side. Um, y is greater than or equal to 2. We shade in that direction. And this one we shade in that direction. So that would pretty much give you the, the solution set, which is the feasible region here. Um, this can take a lot of time to master, especially to know what part of the line to shade. Uh, but with practice, eventually, students often get it and become very, very good at it. Let's look at another question. This didn't do require any optimization, just a shade. The second question here says, a florist makes bouquets of flowers each consisting of roses and orchids. Now, we are told that X is the roses and Y is the orchids. For each bouquet, she applies the following constraints. The number of orchids must be at least half the number of roses. There must be at least two roses. And there must not be no more than 12 flowers. So these are our, our, our constraints here, and we're going to write those in inequality form. So let's write down those in inequality form. And the number of orchids must be at least half the number of roses. No. Orchids is represented by Y. So the number of orchids must be at least half, so it's greater. At least half the number of roses. That's our first constraint. Second, there must be at least two roses. Now, roses is represented by, by x. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. And the third constraint that we have there is that the number of flowers cannot be more than 12. So x plus y has to be less than or equal to 12. As we said earlier, when you have questions like this, we have to transform them. So we're going to um, transpose and write this in, the, in terms of y. So y is less than or equal to 12 minus x. And so we're going to be draw, drawing these in a graph again. If you want to pause the video and go draw them and come back, or if you have the question sheet that was provided, then that would be great. So we have this one, this one, and this one to draw. We're going to go to the graph now and look at it. So here's our graph. Y is equal to 12 minus X. That's this line. Um, this line is, is um, X equal to, and this line is Y is equal to half of X. Now let's look back at our, at our um, constraints. It says Y is greater than, than half of X, greater than or equal to. We want the side that is greater, and the side that is greater is usually the upper side of the line here. So we're going to look at the upper side of the line. So we want to shade in this direction. Also, 
we were told that there must be at least two roses. So at least two roses means two, three, four. So we want to shade in this direction. For the roses, we want those numbers going in that direction. And you probably see already the, the, the region starting to form. And the last question, the last constraint rather, um, the number of flowers must not, must not be more than 12. So y is less than 12 minus x. So on the underside of this line, which means that we shade in this direction. And there you have your, your feasible region. Just gonna go ahead and shade that region uh, in, in, a, in a brighter color. So this is our feasible region here. All of this. Now, like I said, in practice, we this feasible region represents all the solutions. So if you're asked about it in terms of to write a sentence, um, that's what the feasible region is. It represents all the solutions that you can possibly find, and there are infinitely many of them. Um, the best ones are located on the boundaries of the region. So we look at our corners, which are these three corners. So let's look back at our question a little bit. It says, state the coordinates of the points which represent the vertices of the region. No, the vertices of the region are represented um, here, here, and here. These are the three vertices of the region. The coordinates for this one are two, one, two on the X, one on the Y. So the, the coordinates are two, one, and the coordinate for this one is 8, 4. So we could also write that. 8, 4. And the final coordinate is this one up here, which is 2 on the x and 10 on the y. Oopsie. All right. 2 on the x and 10 on the y. So 2, 1, 8, 4, and 2, 10 are the answers to that particular part. And then we are told um the florist sells a bouquet of flowers to make a profit on each to make a profit um three dollars on each rose and four dollars on each orchid determine the maximum possible profit for the sale of the bouquet all right so going back here let's look back at our points again um so our, our vertices our vertices are two one and eight, eight, four. I hope I wrote eight, four earlier. And two, ten. All right. Yes, I did write eight, four. Eight, four and two, ten. Um, now we need to talk about something called the, the objective function. Now, the objective function, I'm going to just erase this and deal with the objective function in this space. The objective function is that function that sometimes you call a profit function that you use to maximize or minimize. Now, since x represents the number of roses, then 3 times x gives us the amount of money we are going to make from selling the roses. And y represents the number of orchids. So 4 times y represents the amount of money that she will get from selling the orchids. So this represents our profit function, or it represents, um, if you want to call it our wage function, it represents the amount of money that she's going to get. And so in order to optimize, we're going to use this function to um, optimize. So let's take that function, let's put it here. So each of these three points, since we're looking at looking at an optimization, we need to put each of these three points into this into this objective function here, and see which one gives the maximum. Now, remember with your points, this is x and that is y, and so we need to substitute each one into the function individually. So let's say three times x plus four times y using the first point. That's 3 times 2 plus 4 times 1. And that gives us 6 plus 4. And that's 10. So that's $10. In the second instance, it's 3 times 
8. Let me write that better. 3 times 8 plus 4 times 4. And that gives us 3 8 is 24 plus 16. And 24 plus 16 here, 20, 30 gives us $40. And the third instance, we have 3 times 2 plus 4 times 10. Because that point, that final point was 210. And this gives us 6 plus 40, which gives us a total of $46. Now the question said, um, determine the maximum possible profit on the sale of the bouquet. And since we're looking at maximum possible profit, then our solution would be would be um would be this. The maximum possible profit would be $46. And $46 is obtained by using a combination of 10 orchids and two roses in each bouquet. And if the, if the florist does that, then she's guaranteed of making the most money from her bouquets or his book is, whoever the florist is. So this is the idea behind the question when we're doing the maximization. So we have our objective function and we look at the points along the, the vertices of our region. And once we have those vertices, we, we substitute them into the, into the profit function here and do that calculation and see what will give us the most or what will give us the least. If we're looking at the maximum, then we look at the, the larger number. If we're looking at the, 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 the minimum, then we we'll obviously pick the smaller number. And that is how it works for this question. Um, let's look at our final question. Um, here we have that Mrs. Cave wants to, um, wishes to buy stereos and televisions. Um, the number of sets must not exceed 20. And so we must write an inequality to represent that situation. So by now you should get an idea of the, of the way that the questions are structured. Mrs. K wishes to buy X stereos and Y television sets, but the number of sets must not exceed 20. So we can write that inequality as X plus Y is less than or equal to 20. All right, so we're good with that. Um, each stereo set costs $150, and each television, television set costs $300. She can spend a maximum of $4,500, so she has a budget. And so we can set up another inequality in terms of this. So each television set, which is represented by um, Y, and each stereo, which is represented by X, um, when we combine those, we, we have a total budget of 4,500 that we can spend. So each stereo, stereo is Y, so we have 150Y, yes, plus the number, of the, the cost of the TV, 200 for the TV, Um, X stereo, um, let me see, I think I'm making a mistake here. Um, y television, okay, no, it's fine. And X stereo, so it's 300 X, just making sure. And the, the maximum amount of money that she can spend is 4,500. All right, so we have our second inequality. Each stereo set costs 150. Stereo set is X, so there is, and there is indeed a mistake in there. So it should actually say um, 150 X plus 300 Y is less than or equal to 4,500. Exactly so. Um, and typically these questions come with a lot of reading. Um, the idea is make sure that you read it and um, understand what you're doing before you write it down. All right. 
So we have that one. She must buy at least five of each. So she must buy at least five stereos. So the X is greater than or equal to five. And the televisions is um, television is greater than or equal to five as well. So we have a number of inequalities, one, two, three, four. And now we're going to need to put that on a graph. Um, using that, okay. Well, the question will be telling you what to use. We're not going to be doing that because we're drawing our graph already. But at this point, you can stop and go ahead and draw your graph if you want to. Identify by shading the region that satisfies the four inequalities. And then there's a profit function, which is our objective function. We should write that now. Um, profit on each stereo is $80. Now remember, x is a stereo. So we have 80x plus $100 from each TV, 100y, would um, give us our profit. And so this is our objective function. Okay, so the quest, this question is asking us to make a decision. Write an expression. We call it that. There it is. Um, how many of each set should she buy to make the maximum profit and state what the maximum profit is? So this question is actually asking for a decision as to what to do in terms of what number of TV sets and stuff to buy. Remember, when we're solving inequalities like these, when we're going to graph them, we need to write them in terms of y. So this one is going to be y is less than or equal to 20 minus x. Um, this one, we can simplify it out by dividing through by x. And when we divide through by x, by, sorry, dividing through by 150. So when we divide this through, we can simplify it down to become x plus 2y is less than or equal to 30 when you divide it through by 150. And once you do that, then the inequality can be rewritten as y is less than or equal to 30 minus x over 2. And so you have your inequalities that you want to graph. That's this one. And this one. Remember, we're going to graph them in terms of y as if you were to going to graph um, equations. All right. So there we are. One, two, three, four inequalities. We do not graph the objective function. The objective function is used to make decisions at the end as to how many we need to buy or what will give us the maximum or minimum. So we do not graph this one. So let's look at our graph. Here we have y is equal to 20 minus x. And we were supposed to shade the underside of that line. So shading in this direction. The second one, x is greater than 5, means that we're going to be shading in this direction. Remember this line here, the shading continues. So if you wanted to, um, shading continues all the way along that side. Um, x is greater than 5, so all the numbers going in that direction would be interesting. y is greater than 5, so we need all the numbers going in this direction, bigger than 5 going up. And the last inequality, y is less than or equal to 30 minus x over 2. Um, it's less than or equal to, so we want the numbers going in this direction. That would be less than. And that shows you that our feasible region is this region represented right here. And so I'm going to shade it in. Um, here we go. That's the region that we want. Uh, back in the day when these questions used to be given, they used to be given their own question on CXE. It used to be a question by itself that gave you a total of about 15 marks. They are pretty long. This is one of those examples. Nowadays, when CXE does them, they make them a bit shorter because they have shortened the number of marks to include other topics um, in that number eight question on your CXE paper. This is where this question would fall now um, at that question number eight that deals with functions, algebra, and, and graphs. So here's our feasible region. 
um, to get our answers, we need to look at the at the extreme points. So we need to look at this point, this point. These are the boundaries of our region. This point and that point. Before we go any further, let's go back and get our objective function. Remember, this is our objective function: 80x plus 100y equal p, and we got that from here. This profit on the stereo is $80. The profit on the TV is $100. And so this is our objective function, and we needed to decide what she should do. So our objective function, let's just write it up here. 80x plus 100y gives us the profit. And so we can write down our coordinates here. This coordinate here is 5, 5. So we can write that down. This coordinate here is 5, um, this is 12. Okay. Uh, this 12, 13, 14. This is saying 12 and a half. 5, 12.5, let's just write it down. This is 12 and 13 and 14, and if you notice, it's halfway between, so that's what we get there. This coordinate is 10, 10. And this coordinate is 15, 5. So let's write that right here, 15, 5. So she have a, we have a number of decisions to look at. Um, one, two, three, four. Four decisions by looking at these numbers. Um, this one is interesting because it says 5, 12.5, but then you're dealing with a TV. And a TV, um, you cannot buy half of a TV. Um, so <laughs> it's interesting. But let's do what we should do by substituting the numbers into the objective function to see which one would give us the most. So we can say 80 times 5 plus, let's just write that a little better. Um, the first situation is 80 times 5. Let me just do some brackets here so you can follow, follow better. 80 times 5 plus 100 times 5. And so that will give us 5, 8, 40, that's 400, plus 500, and that would give you um, 900. And the second set of points coming this way, we have 80 times 15. Plus 100 times 5. Doing a quick calculation here, um, 5 times 80 is 400, and 10 times 80 is 800, um, plus um, 500 here. That gives you 8 plus 4, 12, 12 plus 5, 17, that's 1,700. Um, make sure that you check the calculations to, to ensure that they are correct. So we have 80 times 15 plus 500, and that gives you 1,700. And that's the second one coming this direction. This one, 10, 10. So it will be 80 times 10 plus 100 times 10. Um, so this gives us 800 plus 1,000, which is 1,800. And the last one, which is... Um, uh, interesting solution there. 5, so it's 80 times 5 plus um, 100 times 12.5. I'm just writing it out for, for writing it out sake. 80 times 5 is 400 plus um, 100 times 12.5 gives us 1,250. And that would give us 1,650. Now, we wanted to know which one of these decisions would give us the most profit. Um, looking at it, 
you would see that this solution here, this option here rather, would give us, you would give her the most profit. So if she buys 10, um, 10 stereos and 10 TVs, then she would get the most profit. So in answering the question here, um, write an expression, we've done that. How many of each should she buy in order to get the, the most profit? It's 10 of each. So 10 TVs and 10 stereos, and that would give us give her the most profit. And what is the maximum profit? Well, according to the question, the maximum profit is $1,800. And so we can conclude this question, $1,800. That's the maximum profit. So using this option here, um, we get $1,800 in terms of profit. This is a maximum, and her decision is to buy 10 TVs and 10 stereos. This is exactly how CXE tends to go about dealing with um, optimization questions in linear programming. And you would definitely need a lot more practice, but I hope this, this um, lesson would have given you a jump start into how to go about the questions. Like I said, they take a bit of time because you have to draw your graphs and shade about what CXC has been doing over the past couple of years is to save time. They have actually given you the graph paper and set up some of the graphs already so that it makes it easier for the student. Or they may already, sometimes they just draw the graph and ask you to interpret it. Um, whatever the case is, continue to practice. I hope this um, video would have helped and the best of wishes as you continue working towards getting that grade one in your CXE. Thanks for watching.